Welcome back. Continue with our combative section. We're going to move up the food chain a little bit here, or actually move up the arm, and start dealing with the upper part of the arm in regards to a push defense. Joining me once again is Jay Fern. Come on in here, brother. Jay is donating his body to science here so we can beat the crap out of him a little bit and he won't complain too much. I'll give him some scotch, he'll be fine. The last video we did, we talked about working on the lower part of the arm, right here in the forearm. If you haven't seen that, I encourage you to go back and take a peek at it because it lays the fundamentals for what we're about to do. Now I want to move up the arm a little bit. We're going to stay with that same fundamental attack and that is a, a, a nice firm push on the chest here. It's a shove. Okay, it's a good training tool. It's a good way to practice these techniques. A thousand and one ways to get these techniques, no doubt about it. But if I'm going to show you some basic ways in order to set you up, let's get it here. So. You can go ahead and save the comments about how this is not realistic. This is for demonstration purposes. Okay, we get it. The point I'm going to work is right in the middle of the bicep. Now I have to look at this just a second. I want to actually hit down into the bicep. If I strike down this way, I'm actually moving the bicep down a little bit. I want to compress that tissue against the humerus, against the bone and the arm. So I need to hit it this way. If I hit it down, the muscle will actually stretch and while it's uncomfortable, it's not nearly as debilitating as I need it to be. So let's have Jay cooperate with me just for a moment. He's going to statically push up against my chest. And let's talk about our target. I'm going to use right in the middle of the bicep. If you ever get a good look at that, a look at a physiology and anatomy book, you see that there's actually two bunches of tissue here. I'm going to try to get in between them. I'm going to strike directly into that this way. As I did on the forearm strike, I'm going to use that knuckle. I like that knuckle because I get good penetration. You use whatever tool feels comfortable to you. Some people, I've seen people hit this with a knife hand. I've seen some people punch it. Whatever tool works naturally for you, by all means. That's one nice thing about the combatives techniques that we teach, is that whatever tool is natural to you, we can adapt it to make it work. So here we are. Jay's going to push again. I'm going to blend just slightly. Don't get into a shoving match with me. It's too strong. I lay this hand up here just as a reference point or anything else. The hand comes in small. I'm going to strike directly into that bicep. And what I get is physical dysfunction. I get a numbing and tingling of the arm, which weakens the arm. Now this arm is diminished in capacity to fight. It's his right arm. He's right-handed. Makes it a little bit easier for me to defend myself. Additionally, the head starts to bend in, allowing me additional targets. And that is incredibly important. If you're ever watching or training with somebody, and they do this, and then they walk away like there's something magical that's about to happen, you got a problem. Okay. You need to be able to follow up. So once again, he pushes. I blend just slightly. I won't take the time to move him, but I want you to be able to see it. I'm going to strike directly under that bicep. Boom, just like this. All right? Mm -hmm. And once again, you get physical dysfunction. There's a lot of ways you can hit this point, as I said. We're using a push, just as a little easy to see technique. If Jay comes in to grab my gun, right here, boom, boom, I can strike with my elbow. I can follow up. So don't think that this is the only way. When you practice this with your friends, because I know you will, come in here, drive directly into the bicep, as if you're trying to get between the two biceps, between the two muscles, and try to push on the bone. If I just dig my hands in there, you get a you get motion, you get a response. Come in here, defang that snake, diminish the strength of the arm, and then follow up with another technique. Okay. Practice your striking. Practice your striking. It's important that if you're serious about combatives, or serious about being a warrior, and I went on a small rant about this recently, is that you be a complete martial artist or complete budoka or complete warrior, not a partial artist. What I mean by that, there's some in the martial arts combatives realm that all they do is striking. They think that's the absolute answer. And I have other people, all they do is grapple, all they do is groundwork. And other people, all they do are joint locks and controls. You have to have all those. If you cannot do all of those, you are missing something. I guarantee it. Because unless you have depleted uranium fifths and have the speed of Bruce Lee, you're going to have to follow up. If all you do is lock, you better develop some, some striking skills. If all you ever do is completely go to the ground, 
you better get some locks and some striking skills. You've got to have it all together in order to be really, really good at combatives. You need to have an answer for every problem. Don't try to force a small framework into every single problem because it will eventually come back and bite you in the butt. So, as with any technique we do, I encourage you to seek professional instruction. As I said earlier in previous videos, we've got training here in the United States. I've got a fantastic group in Europe, Force Officers Europe, with Gunter Pfeiffer. Seek training and you'll get good at this. So until I see you on the range or see you in the classroom, stay safe and stay in the fight.